Hey there nerds, Jimmy Palmquist here. We're gonna have a little drive time chat to remember a true legend of a director, legend of a horror creator, Wes Craven, a uh, boy from Cleveland, Ohio. Just really sad, he passed away this uh, this past weekend. And uh, to be honest, it was one of those things where one, I didn't expect him to pass away, but two, I didn't realize I would be so affected by it. It's uh, just, an, just an odd thought, you know. I've, I met him once, very lucky to meet him, in about 2001. So he finished the uh, the Red Violin, the movie with Meryl Streep, and uh, I got to meet him at a uh, Cleveland International Film Festival event at a dinner. Um, it was very cool. He would go. He went around to each table, and he was just he was doing it, I, I believe, just to raise money for the uh, Cleveland Film Institute. And uh, it was very cool. Came around to each table, said hi to people. Uh, it was me, my wife, and uh, well, she wasn't my wife at the time, but my girl wife. Um, or she is now my wife, so I don't get in trouble. Um, and my good friend Dave Brock, we all went from film school up to Cleveland to have dinner with him. And he stopped at our table and we talked just a little bit. And um, I've been a huge fan of his from the horror film side of things. And Dave, but Dave Brock, huge fan. And Dave <clears throat> credits Wes for one of the reasons why he went to film school and why he got so into writing and directing and um, just the genre itself. Um, but it was classic that we were all got his autograph and my wife pulled out a My Little, or I'm sorry, a, a Little Mermaid tablet, a little uh, notepad, and asked him to sign that. And he did. And it was this man who had created some of the most horrific stories, images in horror history. And he takes the notepad and he draws little bubbles and says, I just wanted to make sure that Ariel could breathe. And then he signed his name. And it was just like, how touching a moment from this dude who scared the crap out of me basically my whole life. Uh, it was just amazing and it showed what kind of man he was. He was just a very gracious, gentle, nice guy who had a mind for scaring the crap out of audiences. Very awesome. And then we went to a question and answer later, which there were a lot of great questions, but there are also the gratuitous, hey, I want to get into filmmaking. How do I do it? Not interested in that. I was more interested in what he had to say. And it was just a very well-spoken man, very impressive. So I was very saddened to hear of his passing. His movie, starting with Last House on the Left, a very raw, brutal revenge story. Um, it's just unbelievable that he busts out of the gates with that. And I know it's been compared to uh, I Spit on Your Grave, which I don't think there's any comparison. I think Last House on the Left is way better, way more emotional. Um, just raw, brutal and raw. Follows that up with The Hills Have Eyes, which is another story, which gets, I think, further down into the horror path, less revenge, more horror, and just isolation, being in the middle of the desert, running into, you know, this population of mutants, and they just terrorize this family, and it's like, oh man, just brutal. To, of course, his most famous, in my opinion, his most famous creation, and uh, as they say, the house that built New Line Cinema, uh, Freddy Krueger, just the idea that Freddy is a possibility and that he exists to haunt your dreams and the dreamscape is unbelievable. And I'm so glad that it was out of desperation, but that New Line reached out to him and basically settled old debts so that he would get paid from the whole franchise because he only directed the first one and A New Nightmare um, because he really got kind of disillusioned with the franchise, specifically the second one, and where that came from and that Freddy was physically killing people coming into the real world, which reading anything from Wes, you realize that's not what he intended from Freddy. So it was great to see New Line give him credit and then bring him back for the theoretically the last one. I know there was a reboot, which in my opinion was not good, but um, Wes Craven's New Nightmare was sort of revolutionary at the time, and it really is a stepping stone to then his second great franchise, and I say second only because I grew up with Freddy. Scream was just as great. The first one was phenomenal. I'm not a huge fan of all the sequels, 
but I'll tell you, upon uh, re-watching them a couple months ago, they, they are better than I remember. Uh, specifically the third one, I thought that was awful when I saw it in theaters. Seeing it again, it's not as bad as I remember. Um, and the fourth one I enjoyed because it sort of tried to reintroduce this movie franchise to a new generation of horror goers in a, an updated way with new media and all that stuff. But again, created Scream, a second great franchise. Rarely do you have people who are able to do that, to bridge the gap and, and have a second major franchise. Not to mention the films he did in between, like The People Under the Stairs, which I thought is fantastic, very underrated. Um, as growing up, every birthday party I had, I would have people over and we would watch a horror film. That was my thing. I loved to do that. And I, looking back, I'm sure there were a lot of people that didn't like horror films, so they just came and suffered through it and was like, hey, this is my thing. I love it. But People Under the Stairs was one of the ones we watched. Shocker was another one we watched. And this is something I, I heavily relied on Wes Craven to be my go-to guy for those sorts of things. And I loved these movies, loved him. But he also basically got beyond those two franchises and made some great movies. The Red Violin, a drama. Who saw that coming? Fantastic film with Meryl Streep. Loved it. Um, I very much enjoy Cursed, which is more of a recent one. It's not recent anymore, but more of a recent one past the Scream franchise. Um, really enjoyed that one. And Red Eye. I honestly had forgotten that he did Red Eye. That is a great suspense flick. Very tight, very short, but all the elements are there and you just feel it the whole way. It's a, just a fantastic movie. I love it. Cillian Murphy is just creepy as all get out. And it's just a nice, tight story. So, the passing of Wes Craven is very sad to me. Um, as I said on social media, and this isn't a joke, um, the world is a lot less scary. And I mean that in, in a bad way. Horror films are just a great way to feel raw emotion. And Wes Craven tapped into that like really no other director. Yes, I know we have the Sean Cunninghams and we have the John Carpenters uh, and just you know a whole slew of horror film writers and directors, but it was really Wes Craven who could reach in, find our fears at a societal level, and just twist it a little bit so it scared the crap out of us. And that he was so educated and so in touch, let us know, man, this dude is out to get us and he knows how to get us. And it's just amazing, his accomplishments, because he started rather late in life, in his 30s, it's just amazing his accomplishments, how he got there, what he was able to do. So yes, I'm very sad to see that Wes Craven passed away. Um, the world, the world is not a, not as good as it was yesterday. In that, it was an amazing storyteller. He could tell dramas, comedies, horror films, and uh, I'm really sad to see that he has passed away. So let me know what you guys think in the comments below. Let me know what your favorite Wes Craven flick is. I'm excited to hear this.